Good morning, Illini. Welcome back. I'm Matt Schrock, your host, and we are back with another Healthy Illini podcast. And it's, we're getting into the fall season. We're getting into the swing of the semester, and everything is rolling. And because of that, our schedules are getting busier and busier, both in class and out of class. And so we want to talk a little bit about taking care of yourself today, but we've got a full house, so we're going to jump right into it. Today, I have a number of guests. In fact, this might be the the most guests we've had. It might have, We might have had this many before, I'm not sure. But I'm joined by five people today, and so I want to introduce them real quick. Uh, we have Anna pride Wait. She is our stress management educator here at McKinley. Anna, thanks for being here. Thank you. And we're joined by your grad assistant, Nancy Torres. She is the grad assistant with the stress education here at McKinley. Nancy, appreciate you being here. Thank you. <laughs> And then we've got uh, three members of our stress management peers that are joining us as well. We've got Yagna Reddy. He is a senior. We have Christian Ambrosio, a junior, and Shuli Rai, a junior. Thanks for being here, guys. Yeah, Thank you. of course. Thank you. Okay. So, I mean, you talk to anybody who is going into college or is in college or has been, has been in college, everybody talks about it's an extremely busy part of our lives, a busy time in our lives. And some of it, some of it is by necessity, like classes and studying and assignments. That's just... It takes up a lot of our time, but some is by choice, like how we hang out with friends or how we attend events on campus, things like that. And so the truth is everyone has to make choices every day on prioritizing what our options are. And unfortunately for many of us, when we do that prior prioritizing, we, we push adequate sleep down on that list. And if you ask people, most of us would say that sleep is very important, but our actions tend to contradict that view. So let, let, let's begin with, it just let's explain a little bit why, why good sleep is so important. Um, so sleep is important because it has a lot of health benefits. It's overall for our well-being. Um, it affects like our mental health, um, our physical health as well. Um, and it's very important as we're all students. So like we need, sleep helps us with our concentration and then also like, um, talking to people and co- making connections. And for mental health, pretty much it reduces anxiety if you sleep more. Because from what I've experienced, and I sleep like four or three hours a night. <laughs> In the morning, I'm like, I'm not ready for the day at all. And I just think about what I have to do throughout the day. It just brings me more anxiety. And I just, yeah, it just overwhelms me at sometimes. Yeah, when we're getting enough sleep at night, it helps us to start our day fresh, make sure that we can kind of keep into our routines of whatever it is that we hope to get done for the day. Yeah, um, I was actually reading um, some time ago that sleep, like bad sleep is both like a cause and a consequence of mental health problems, which I thought was interesting. Like if you have anxiety, it can make it harder for you to go to sleep. Um, And then if that pattern continues for multiple nights, then you can develop like anxiety from like just the thought of sleeping, which can make that um, behavior or like it can make it even harder for you to sleep later on. So that it's just like kind of like a vicious cycle that goes on. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say that that's that cycle that you begin in that if you don't have enough sleep, then you're tired and then you get stressed because you are tired and then you don't sleep well because you're stressed, then you're more tired. It just goes back. It keeps going around and around, especially when you're talking about classes and, you know, studying and things like that, because it makes a a huge difference there. Um, But not just from the mental side of it, but physical as well. There there are aspects of your physical health that are affected by lack of sleep. Is that is that is that true? Uh, Yeah. um... I believe that, like, I mean, of, of course, you're, like, more tired, um, like, on days that you don't get enough sleep, but then also, um, like, continuously not getting enough sleep that can affect, like, your immune system. Uh, you know, you'll fall sick um, quicker and more easily. Um, and then it also um, affects, like, your reaction. To, like, th- it has other effects as well on your, like, performance, like, physical performance. So, like, while exercising or while like just like going about your day does affect like stuff like your reaction time too so there's quite a few like physical effects on your health as well yeah and i think it's um it's also like pretty dangerous because i think it's easy to mask um the negative effects of not sleeping enough because like you could just um um drink coffee or an energy drink and you can kind of forget about it uh, throughout the day but i think that um even in that day or multiple days of not sleeping enough, that effect can really build up and you're not really consciously thinking about it because the hardest part of, uh, I think, getting like not enough sleep is just waking up. But then once you wake up, then you're not even thinking about that. And it can have really like a lot of unintended consequences throughout the day. You can also get yourself to a point where you, you think you're functioning 
at a high level, mm -hmm. but you're just used to functioning at that level, whatever yeah. it may be. And, and you, you, you know, you talk about masking it and, and you can kind of hide it. You can kind of hide it from yourself too. Sometimes and there's, there's times in my life I know where it was almost like a personality trait functioning on little sleep, um, where it was mm -hmm. like, Oh, I can do this. This is who I am. And it, it, it wasn't healthy, but it, I kind of convinced myself that this is how I needed to function at this time. And that can get you into some real problems. And then you reap the, the negative benefit, the negative consequences of it. And like, we haven't really touched on it much, but, um, just from trying to, to perform well in a class, uh, when you're doing on an exam or, I mean, how, do, how does, how does having that lack of sleep affect you when you're in class or taking an exam or something along that line? Um, well, personally, it really affects like my ability to recall. Like I can think I, I learned something, re um, have something memorized, but then once I get to the test, it just like, I completely blank out and I really like, it's hard to explain, but I really cannot remember um, what it is, even though I know that, um, that I had previously learned that information, it's just really hard to bring it up at that time. It can be really easily, easy to get distracted too when you're not sleeping well and you're sitting there in class, you're sitting there, or for my case, like sitting at work and I haven't got a good night's sleep. And it's like, what was I doing? You kind of have those moments where you might zone out a little bit, not really thinking about anything and they're like, oh man, did I get enough sleep last night? What am I doing? <laughs> Yeah, I remember, like, for me, um, like, when I was younger, my dad, before, especially my math exams, uh, he'd tell me to, like, sleep for at least eight hours, and I sort of ignored his advice because I was like, uh, like, I don't feel that sleepy during the exam, <laughs> so I'm like, like, why should I? But then I noticed that it does, like, affect, like, I again, like, I'm not feeling sleepy during the exam, but I'm, like, not able to concentrate as well as I would have if I had had more sleep. So like that way it did like affect my performance. Also like when we sleep, we go like through cycles and like one of them is like the long-term memory. So like Yangna said, having a trouble, a hard time like remembering all the information like he just learned is because like we're not getting that sleep. So those memories aren't like being made. So we're not retaining that information even though we spend like hours studying. Um, which a lot of students like do. I know I've stayed up super late trying to stud like cram in studying for an exam, which never helps the <laughs> next day. Well, and so we've talked a little bit about um, the negative impact of, of not sleeping, but there's a difference between being sleepy and having sleep deprivation. Uh, I mean, being sleepy is not something that, we, you know, we don't want to judge anybody for being sleepy. There's all, we all have moments in our lives where you go to bed at a good time, you lay down, you do all the right things, you wake up the next morning, you just didn't sleep well. And that, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here are the, the things where um, it's truly sleep deprivation, where you're just not getting sleep. And, and those days uh, where you are sleeping are beginning to stack one on another and they're, they begin to compound and you begin to just really get into that, that dangerous area. So what are some of the, the causes of that more than just you being busy? What are some of the things that cause you not to be able to, to sleep well, cause you not to be able to get that, that rest, even though you may be trying to? What are some of the, the factors in your life that might play a part into that? Um, for me, it's just being anxious about like what I'm going to do tomorrow and the day after that and what I have to do throughout that week. And it's just, it just bothers me sometimes throughout the night. Yeah, same. Um, I actually tried uh uh, recently, I've been trying to, um, like, before I go to bed, I jot down a couple things that I need to do as soon as I wake up, just so that I know that otherwise I'll just be stressing about it um, when I go to bed and, like, subconsciously throughout the night, I'll just be tossing and turning over that. So that's just something that I do personally that may help. I think probably also, like, diet plays a big role. As college students, we don't eat the healthiest, and so we're not getting a lot of, like, the vitamins, so the natural melatonin is not there. Um, at least I have a really bad diet sometimes, um, and I have trouble sleeping, especially when I don't eat that healthy. I think just like bouncing off like what you eat, like eating super late at night can play a huge part in like not being able to sleep well throughout. So if you're eating like a huge meal before bed, probably not going to sleep very well. <laughs> One of the things that you mentioned in in the the uh, uh, workup that we did before the, the prep work that we did before you, you talked, you talked about poor sleep hygiene. What is sleep hygiene? What, what did you mean by that? 
so sleep hygiene is basically habits and practices that help us kind of get to sleep. So those can be like, whether it's like your bedroom environment or like the routines that you have kind of leading up to going to bed. So it could be anything from like an example of like a routine you might build for yourself, like having a warm glass of milk before bed, taking a warm shower, crawling into bed, no screen time, making sure like your phone's on do not disturb. Um, maybe practicing some type of like relaxation technique if you feel like you're still maybe a little bit wired from the day. Um, those are kind of examples of sleep hygiene habits that you can kind of build for yourself. So continuing on that, because we don't want to talk about just the negative sides of, of lack of sleep. We do want to um, talk about what you can do. And if somebody's listening, they're like, you know what, that's me. I'm, I'm not sleeping real well or I'm not taking care of her. I'm not even some, – sometimes it's not necessarily that you're, that someone is not doing it well. They're just not cognitively – focusing on it. You know, that's, we, we were so busy during our days. We, we wind out our days and everything. Often the last part of the day is just, I'm just going to fall out, fall over and pass out wherever I pass out in the house. Um, that kind of idea, but you want to be intentional in some of the ways that you approach this. And so, um, I wanted to really give you an opportunity to, to share some things on, uh, tips on how you can, uh, achieve that good sleep hygiene, how, how you can achieve some relaxation, what you can do, things that will help you maintain that balance uh, between the busyness, busyness of our lives and that rest and recuperation. So any, any advice that you have, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear about it right now. Uh, for me, I would say put on music, not the music that we like listen to, like rap music or anything like that. Um, more of just like the subtle music that you want to, like just to cancel out the world, turn off everything. Pretty much just relax or try to relax when doing that. That's what I do. Um, yeah, one thing I also wanted to mention was um, trying to separate between your work and sleep. I know a lot of students um, like to work on their bed, and I think that that builds um, a pretty negative association to your bed. And I think that it's healthier to you know maintain that physical separation because um, what can happen is that. Uh, once you start, once you go to your bed, then you're um, automatically thinking about work because you've just associated those things together. So I think it's really important to separate those two um, for better sleep. I think that's a really good point. Um, one of the things I learned during the pandemic shutdown, we learned a lot of things. One of the things I learned is that when I work from home, I struggle with that because I have a family, I have a home life, and separating work from family was not always easy. And mm -hmm. I felt the stress of both at the same time. And it was really important for me to establish boundaries of I do work here and I don't do work in these parts of my house. Right. And so I think that's a great point that we don't think about often, but you're right. You know, if you, if you, if you keep that, the place where you sleep as a, uh, a place separate from other stresses, it, it would make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. that, that's a great point. Um, anything else? Um, one thing I want to mention, um, especially because we have like a large international student population here at U of I, and they're coming from different time zones. So like, I know a lot of times their sleep is affected because of that. They're not used to this time zone. So I would say some tips probably for that is like start getting used to the time zone here like um, a little bit ahead of time. I know Shuli is an international student, so maybe she can talk about it a little bit more. Uh, yeah, this is something that everyone I know struggles with. Like, um, So what I do is I generally try to like come to campus like as soon as possible, like at, like um, a couple days before classes start so that I have enough time to get used to this because otherwise, like, even though I come, like, a week early usually, uh, in the first week of classes, like, um, like even at, like, for my 11 a.m. classes or, like, 1 p.m. classes, I know I want to sleep at that time because in India, that would be my bedtime. So um, I think the... Um, like one thing that everyone swears by though is uh, to not give in to the temptation of like sleeping when you really really want to or like to delay that by a couple hours every day um, in the week before classes start so that um, your body sort of starts getting used to this time zone but yeah I think like in a week or two like everyone sort of just gets used to that yeah setting in being intentional in your schedule mm -hmm. is what I'm hearing a lot of, of what you're talking about time management and things mm -hmm. like that because it it, when you're coming from somewhere that your body is used to a, an eating schedule, a sleeping schedule, then you try and try, I've, I've traveled a little bit internationally, and I know that that first day is just awful. <laughs> um, trying to to retrain yourself is not easy, yeah. and it takes some real intentionality. And so, yeah, it was, again, with sleep schedule, just making sure that you write down or even a, a, a daily planner kind of thing to mm -hmm. kind of keep track really makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Any other tips? 
Um, also, as someone who loves naps, um, <laughs> I would say definitely try to limit your naps and make them shorter. Um, I have a hard time with this because I love taking like two to three hour naps, but <laughs> every time I do that, I cannot sleep at night. So I know it's like power naps, like 20 to like 40 minute naps is like the way to go um, if you do like need a nap. Um, one more thing that helps me, like sometimes I'm actually like trying to sleep on time and everything, but I just... Um, like you know I'm just like really anxious about something anything um, so I found that like journaling helps me like right before bed and like every time I feel like I feel like there's like different ways that you can go about it like sometimes I just write down like all the things that like went well that day or like some things that I'm appreciative about or like maybe I just write down like all the thoughts that I'm having in that moment so I can like find where I should like stop myself or like yeah, something like that. So, like, I feel like that can be, like, different for everyone or it can be different for every time you want to do it. But, yeah, that, I know that that really helps me. Again, that's something that if you listen to the, to Healthy Illini, uh regularly, you'll hear us talk about everybody's on their own individual journey, that everyone has their own path they're taking and how they're getting there. And so you're right, Julie, that, that works. And, and sometimes it, even your own, on your own path, at certain, sometimes it works at certain points on that path and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, everyone, your, your, your path is, is fluid. It moves, it evolves and these types of things. Uh, the other thing I, I do want to make mention of though is um, that there are moments where medication can help. Uh, medication may not be for everybody, but it is certainly for some people. I myself have some medication that helps me um, with my evening routines. And um, so if you're listening to this and you're not sure, one good thing you can do is schedule an appointment with Anna. Come in and talk to her about um, stress management with, with sleep and things like that. And uh, and our, our providers here are really good about looking at and saying, okay, this is where you're at, this is what you need. Or we might want to look into the medication side of things. Um, and we, you know, there, there's been a great move in the last few years, especially of moving away from any stigma with any kind of medication. Um, but it's just a matter of a conversation. Having that conversation is really important. So if you're listening and you're not sure, um, ask somebody. You make an appointment at McKinley. Uh, we'll be happy to talk with you and uh, see if that's something that is that it w- might be beneficial or there's other options there as well. Um, so there's a lot of, of that as well. Um, anything else? Any other, I mean, you guys have covered a whole bunch. And like we said, in all the podcasts, we could go on for forever on these topics. But I didn't know, I just wanted to give you one more, one opportunity just to, to share one more thing. Oh, uh, so caffeine, how do we feel about caffeine? <laughs> oh man, I am guilty, guilty, guilty of having <laughs> caffeine in the afternoon. And like that two o'clock coffee, it definitely takes its toll when I'm trying to go to bed at night. Cause it's not just, you know, that one cup of coffee. It's like a cup of cold brew that is just like, oh my gosh, I'm buzzing for the whole day. And then you get to bed and you're like, my heart is still racing. Oh my gosh. So definitely limiting your caffeine or being conscious of when you're drinking it because I can definitely see it helps in the morning, get you going if you need to, even even my tea drinkers that still has caffeine. Yeah. Um, but being mindful of how much caffeine you're taking in, especially in the afternoon when you're trying to get through the end of your day, it can pay a toll at the end when you're trying to go to bed. <laughs> again it all comes down to being intentional mm-hmm. and just being mindful mm-hmm. of what's going on and uh, not in a way that is negative towards self but just being aware of what you which, what, what works for you what doesn't work for you and uh, trying to adjust on that journey as we go it's amazing it feels like time always flies when we do these things <laughs> um, but I really appreciate you all being here I appreciate you coming and sharing your experiences um, before we go uh if somebody wants to get in contact with the stress management peers or wants to know what you're doing or wants to come talk to you and uh, be, a, uh, be a part of any events you're doing, how would they get in contact with you? So if you go to the McKinley's website under Peer Education Stress Management, you can shoot us an email. Our email is listed there. Or you could reach out to me and Health Education. My name's Anna, and we'll list the resources in the bio. Uh, do you guys have an Instagram? It's smp.uiuc. <laughs> Social media manager. <laughs> <laughs> 
And like Anna said, we will have resources in the bio. You can contact that way. Um, you can always call McKinley. We'll be happy to do that. Contact us at Healthy Line. I will be happy to put you in co- uh, put you in, in contact with the, the stress management peers or whoever we need to. Um, but we will make sure that you are connected with who you need to be connected with if you're looking for more uh, more information or have any questions. Thanks again for being here, guys. Uh, Anna, Nancy, Yagna, Christian, and Shuli. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. College life is busy. It always is. And as it, as the semester goes on, it gets busier and things start piling up and, and bumping into each other on schedules. And one of the things that we tend to neglect is sleep. And that's not a good thing. It affects everything else. So uh, be sure to be intentional in your, in your schedule. Be intentional in how you approach your sleep. If you have any questions, you heard something today you want to talk more about, you want to comment on, you want to follow up with, Please, please, please reach out to us at Healthy Illini. Let us know. Reach out to uh, McKinley. Reach out to the uh, stress management at, in the health education department, and we'll be happy to talk with you. You can find all that contact information in our bio of this episode. But thank you for joining us today. You are on a personal journey no matter where you are in it. You are important, and you matter. Your health and wellness are important and matter. And we are here to keep you well to excel. Go have a great week, Illini. Let us know how you're doing, and we'll catch you next time on Healthy Illini.